So what's the history of Juneteenth? Well, Juneteenth is the oldest nationally celebrated celebration of the ending of slavery in the United States. Dating back to 1865, it was on June 19th that the Union soldiers led by Major General Gordon Granger landed in Galveston, Texas with news that the war had ended and that the enslaved were now free. Note that this was two and a half years after President Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation, which had become official January 1st, 1863. The Emancipation Proclamation had little impact on the Texans due to the minimum number of Union troops to enforce the new executive order. However, with the surrender of General Lee in April of 1865 and the arrival of General Granger's regiment, the forces were finally strong enough to influence and overcome the resistance. Later attempts to explain this two and a half year delay in the receipt of this important news have yielded to several versions that have been handed down through the years. Often told, it is the story of a messenger who was murdered on his way to Texas with the news of freedom. Another is that the news was deliberately withheld by the enslavers to maintain the labor force on the plantations. And still another is that Federal troops actually waited for the slave owners to reap the benefit on one of the last con har harvest before going to Texas to enforce the Emancipation Proclamation. All of which, or none of these versions, could be true. Certainly, for some, President Lincoln's authority over the rebelist states was in question. However, the reasons conditions in Texas remained. However, the reasons conditions in Texas remained status quo well beyond what was said. Truly. One of General Granger's first orders of business was to read the People of Texas General Order Number 3, which began most significantly with The people of Texas are informed that in accordance with the proclamation from the executives of the United States, all slaves are free. This involves an absolute equality of rights and rights of property between former masters and slaves. And the connection here for, here to for, existing between them becomes at that between employer and hired labor. The reactions to this profound news range from pure shock to mean jubilation. While many lingered to learn of this new employer to employee relationship, many left before these offers were completely off the lips of their former masters. Attesting to the varying conditions on the plantations and the realization of freedom. Even with nowhere to go, many felt that leaving the plantation would be the first gasp of freedom. North was a logical destination for many, and for many, it represented true freedom, while the desire to reach family members in neighbor states drove some into Louisiana 
Arkansas and Oklahoma, selling into these new areas as free men and women brought on new realities and challenges of establishing a heretofore non-existent status for black people in America. Recounting the memories that of that great day of June 1865 and its festivities would serve as a motivation in as well as a release from the growing pressure encountered in their new territories. The celebration of June 19th was coined Juneteenth and grew with more participation from dissent. Juneteenth celebration was a time for reassuring of each other, for praying, praying and for gathering remaining family members. Juneteenth continued to be highly reversed in Texas decades later. With many former slaves and descendants making an annual pilgrimage back to Galveston on this date. A range of activities were provided to entertain masses, many of which continue in tradition today. Rodeos, fishing, barbecue, and barbecuing, and baseball are just a few typical Juneteenth activities you may witness today. Juneteenth almost always focuses on education and self-improvement. Thus, often guest speakers are brought into are brought in the and the elders are called upon to recount the events of the past. Prayer services were also major on these celebrations. Certain foods became popular in subsequently synonymous with Juneteenth celebrations, such as strawberries, pop, soda pop, more traditional and just as the popular was the barbecuing through which Juneteenth participants could share in spirit and around aromas that their ancestors, the newly emancipated African Americans, would have experienced during their ceremonies. Hence, the barbecue pit is often established as the center of tension of Juneteenth celebrations. Food was an unmeant because everyone prepared for a special dish. Meats such as lamb, pork, and beef were not available every day, were brought on this special occasion. A true true team celebrations left visitors well satisfied and with enough conversations to last until the next. Dress was also an important element in early June team costumes and is often still taken seriously, particularly by the direct descendants who can make the connection to this traditional tradition's roots. During slavery, there were laws on the books in many areas that prohibit or limited the dressing of the enslaved. During the initial days of the emancipation celebrations, there were there are accounts of former slaves tossing their red garments into the creeks and rivers and adorning themselves with clothing taken from plantations belonging to the former masters. In the early years, little interest out existed outside the African American community in participation in the celebrations. In some cases, there were there was art outwardly exhibited resistance by bearing the use of public property for the festivities. Most of the festivities found themselves out in rural areas around rivers and creeks that could provide for additional activities such as fishing, horseback riding, and barbecues. Often churches were grounded 
of our church grounds were the site for such activities. Eventually, as African Americans became the landowners, land was donated and dedicated for these festivities. One of the earliest documented land purchases in the name of Juneteenth was organized by Rev. Jack Yates. This fund racing effort yielded 1,000 and made possible by the purchase of Emancipation Park in Houston, Texas. In Mexia, the local Juneteenth organization purchased Booker T. Washington Park, which had been which had become the Juneteenth celebration in eighteen ninety eight. There were accounts of Juneteenth activities being interrupted and halted by white land owners demanding that their laborers return to work. However, it seems that most allowed their workers the day off and some even made donations of food and money. For decades, these annual celebrations flourished, growing continuously with each passing year in Brooker T. Washington Park as many as 20,000 African Americans once attended during the course of the week, making the celebration one of the state's largest. Economic and cultural forces led to a decline in Juneteenth activities and participants beginning in the early 1900s. Classroom and textbook education in lieu of a traditional home and family taught practices stifled the interest of youth due to less in emphasis and detail on the lives of former slaves. Classroom textbooks for claimed Lincoln Emancipation Proclamation of January 1st, 1863 as the date signaling the ending of slavery and mentioned little or nothing of the impact of General Granger's arrival on June 19th. That depression forced many people off the farms and into the cities to find work. In these urban environments, employees were less eager to grant leaves to the celebration to celebrate this day. Thus, unless June nineteenth fell on a weekend holiday a weekend or holiday, there were a few participants available. July fourth was already the established independence holiday and a rising patriot system patriotism steered more toward this celebration. The civil rights movements of the 50s and 60s yield both the positive and negative results for the Juneteenth celebrations, while it pulled many of the African American youth away into and into the struggle for racial equality, many linked these struggles to the historical struggles of their ancestors. This was evidenced by students demonstrators involved in the Atlanta Civil Rights Campaign in the early 1860s who wore Juneteenth Freedom Bonds. Again in 1868, Juneteenth received another strong resurgence through the Poor People's March to Washington, D.C. Reverend Ralph Alberti calls for people of all races, creeds, economic levels, and professions to come to Washington to show support for the poor. Many of these attendees returned home and initiated Juneteenth celebrations in areas previously absent of such activities. 
in fact, two of the largest Juneteenth celebrations found di- founded after this march are he- now held in Milwaukee and Minneapolis. On January 1st, 1918-1980, Juneteenth became an official state holiday through the efforts of Al Edwards, an African-American state legislator. The successful passage of this bill marked Juneteenth as the first emancipation celebration granted official state recognition. Edwards has since actively saw to spread the observance of Juneteenth all across America. Today, Juneteenth is enjoying the phenomenal growth rate within the communities and organizations through the country. Institutions such as the Smithsonian, the Family Ford Museum, and others have begun sponsoring Juneteenth Center activities. In recent years, a number of local and national Juneteenth organizations have arisen to take their place alongside older organizations. With all the missions to promote and cultivate knowledge and appreciation of the African American history and culture. Juneteenth today celebrates African American freedom and achievement, while encouraging continuous self development and respect for all cultures, as it takes on no more national, symbolic, and even global perspective. The events of 1865 in Texas are not forgotten, for all the roots tie back to this fertile soul from which a national day of pride is grown. The future of Juneteenth looks bright as the number of cities and states creating Juneteenth committees continue to increase. Respect and appreciation for all differences grow out of exposure and working together. Getting involved and supporting Juneteenth celebrations creates new bonds of the sphere of a friendship, a friendship and understanding among us. This indeed brightens our future, and that is the spirit of Juneteenth. So yeah, I just want to make this video here. And uh, just to let you guys know that this is important because Juneteenth is now officially a national holiday in the United States as of already June 19th, 2020 today. It was just approved by the government as of yesterday and now I'm gonna I'm dying to see if everything will one day change because it's been long overdue and it's time so I uh, do hope you you're all listening and learning because at the end of the day, nobody is nobody is equal until. We all are. Until the black community is has the same equal rights. All lives do not matter until black lives matter. Have a good day.